conflict, action, suspense. Keeping the drama high and the reader wanting or even needing to turn the page and see what happens next is perhaps the most important job of a good plot. But how exactly do well-written stories accomplish this? Well, welcome, my fellow Jade Mountain students, to the art of cliffhanging. Our discussion today begins with the all-important subject matter, the cliffhanger. No, not that one. The other one. It's, you know, the one that ends the scene right before its climax. (laughs) Close enough. Now, as anyone who's ever binged a show on Netflix knows, if nothing else, cliffhangers are a great way to keep audiences engaged and wanting to come back for more. They draw the audience in and make it so much harder to stop at the end of the episode, or in the case of books, at the end of the chapter. But even cliffhangers have issues. Unfortunately for authors, they aren't magic, and they still have some of the same problems as other kinds of plot and pacing tricks. If overdone, they can become exhausting to read, and if done incorrectly, lose their effect entirely. So today, I wanted to talk about how Tui Sutherland, author of the Wings of Fire series, makes the most of cliffhangers, using two specific kinds in order to propel the story forward without wearing the audience out. And, of course, in order to talk about these books, I'm going to need to talk about the books. So, spoilers ahead. Now, before we discuss their use in the Wings of Fire series, let's first just touch on why cliffhangers even work in the first place. Cliffhangers make use of our fundamental need for closure. We, as humans, really don't like it when things are left up in the air. We crave definite conclusions, and if they're not immediately available, we oftentimes will expend effort to seek them out. There are a number of reasons this might be the case, including that seeing the conclusion of an otherwise ambiguous situation helps us to predict it more accurately in the future, and therefore be more in control of it. Now. That might sound like a weird thing to say, but let's take a look at it in an example. I want you to imagine you are a caveman, thousands of years ago, just going about your day. Life is pretty good as far as you're concerned. You've raised a good family, you have a nice area to live in, and although the food could be better, it's not like anyone's starving. But as you're coming back from the day's food gathering activities, you see tracks in the mud. They're big, and they look like they have some nasty claws attached. Those definitely weren't there when you passed this area earlier in the day, so whatever made them is probably still around. But what could possibly have left tracks like those? And perhaps more importantly, is it hungry? Getting closure here, finding the answers to these questions, was quite literally a matter of life and death for our ancestors. As a result, our brains are hardwired to focus on unresolved situations. We pay attention to them and try to figure them out because someday, knowing how whatever it was ended might help us figure out how to avoid that ending in the future. Or if it was a good ending, how to make sure it happens to us. Cliffhangers make use of this built-in need for closure by deliberately ending a scene in an unresolved situation and promising the reader that in order to find the resolution, All they have to do is keep on reading. Okay, so now that we've established that, let's take a look at their place in the Wings of Fire series. We'll start with an example of the most basic and most common form of cliffhanger, what I like to refer to as the action cliffhanger. This excerpt comes from the end of Book 1, Chapter 6, just after the Dragonettes have decided that in order to save Glory and escape their cave, Clay would first have to brave the underground river. Clay felt like the rosy pink color was rising up through his scales now. Glory trusted him. She believed he could do this. He could save her. He could save all of them. He just had to survive the river first. And the chapter ends there. It stops right before he goes in, leaving the situation entirely unresolved. In the Wings of Fire series, and in literature more generally, this kind of cliffhanger usually occurs right before something important happens, and is almost always resolved at the start of the very next chapter. These are the kinds of cliffhangers which demand the audience immediately keep reading. You can't just stop right before you find out what happens, and the resolution is so close. And of course, when you do continue, you usually find the answer you were looking for, 
But by the end of the next chapter, the characters have found their way into a new situation. And you guessed it, there's another cliffhanger. You're joking. Not another one? Now, stringing these back to back to back works in short bursts, but most people don't have the time or attention spans to read an entire book in one sitting, so it doesn't really work to leave every chapter off with a dire situation about to be resolved. And Wings of Fire doesn't. This is where the second, more subtle, but equally powerful form of cliffhanging comes in. What I like to refer to as the plot hangers. Check out this example, the closing lines of Book 4, Part 1. Starflight shook himself as hard as he could. Coming, he said, although he felt like he could barely string any words together. Maybe I'm wrong. But he knew he wasn't. All the pieces fit together too well. I figured out the Nightwing's secret plan, he thought. But now... What do I do about it? There's not any immediate action here. He's heading off to meet some new dragons, and that's about it. But there is something still to be resolved. The secret Nightwing plan. It isn't an issue he's going to be able to immediately fix, and he's probably not even going to try in the next chapter. But, by ending on this note, the author leaves it unresolved what exactly he's going to do about it, and, of course, implies that, if they keep reading, the audience will find out. In the Wings of Fire books, cliffhangers of this sort tend to happen when the plot itself has reached a resting point, but the narrative has not. And that's why they work so well. They intentionally make use of lulls in the immediate action to look towards the future and build suspense for the action to come. In doing so, they give the reader a chance to stop, to take a break, to put the book down, while simultaneously making it that much more likely that they're going to come back and pick it up again later. Because of this, they work in perfect conjunction with the action-based cliffhangers. The action cliffhangers carry the story forward from chapter to chapter, making it exciting to read as you go, and the plot-based cliffhangers provide breaks in the action for readers to rest, while also carrying the story forward from section to overarching section. It is through the interplay of these two kinds of cliffhangers, not just each on their own, that Tui Sutherland is able to craft a book which always feels like something important is about to happen, but with which you can still pause and not stress about it. And that, I would argue, is how to take a simple plot device like a cliffhanger and turn it into an art form. And with that, thanks for watching.